Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and we are starting a new chapter, chapter 11 on chemical calculations from BGU Chemistry's fifth edition. The section we're going to talk about first is section 11.1a on the mole. Our objectives will be to define mole, describe the significance of Avogadro's number, and convert between the mass, number of particles, or number of moles present in a sample of a given chemical substance. So the mole is a really important quantity. Uh, this is really central to a lot of concepts in chemistry. So this is a super important concept. And a mole is the amount of substance contained in 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. This is called Avogadro's number, and it would be 602.2 sextillion is how we would say that number. So if I say Avogadro's number, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So what this number means is that when you have one mole of helium atoms, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd helium atoms. If you have one mole of water molecules, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. And if you have one mole of sodium chloride formula units, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sodium chloride formula units. So whenever you have one mole of a pure substance, you have the same number of particles in each one of those. So a question I might ask you are, how many atoms are in four and a half moles of helium? So we are going to treat all of these problems as conversion problems. So we're going to be using the dimensional analysis that we learned earlier in the year. So the first thing you will do is write four and a half moles of helium because you know that number. And now you know the conversion factor because you know how many atoms are in one mole. And it is... 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium. So remember, with our dimensional analysis, you'll put one mole of helium on the bottom. You'll put the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium on the top so that you can cross these out. You can only cross them out if they're on the top and the bottom because they'll be equal to 1, as you have learned in math class. So now we are in atoms, and that's what we're looking for. So we can simply multiply 4.5 by Avogadro's number. And we get 2.7 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium. Now, it may seem silly that we're writing helium after all of these, but it's a very important habit to get into because pretty soon we're going to be using formulas and converting between different substances. So please get in the habit of writing the substance. If you drop the substances, you'll get really confused later on. When we are doing these problems, we talk about something called molar mass as well. And this is the mass of one mole of any pure substance, so like helium or water or sodium chloride, okay? So for one mole of a pure substance, one atomic mass unit, remember that's what the U means, equals one gram. So what I mean by that is we're going to be using our periodic table. And so, for instance, we used helium before. So the atomic mass of helium is 4.00260 atomic mass units. We get that right here for the atomic mass. But now we also know that this number stands for the molar mass. The mass of one mole of helium is 4.00260 grams. And we can do that for any of the elements on the periodic table. We will now understand that this is not the, only the mass of one atom, it is also the mass of one mole in grams. So for example, carbon 12. 
The mass of one atom of carbon-12 is 12 atomic mass units. But now, we also know that the mass of one mole is 12 grams. It's the same number, but just a different label. So one atom is 12 atomic mass units, one mole is 12 grams. So we can do a problem like this now. Find the mass of 0 0.5000 moles of helium atoms. So we write 0 0.5000 moles of helium because that's what's given in the problem. And now we have to convert to mass in grams. And so I know that if I go to my periodic table, I will be able to figure out the molar mass of helium right here, 4.00260 grams. So I will put that into my problem, making sure I put moles on the bottom. So one mole of helium is equal to 4.00260 grams of helium. I've crossed out my moles. I'm in grams, so I'm where I want to be conversion-wise. Now, remember, we also have to remember our significant digit or figures rules. So when I do this problem, my answer better have four significant figures. So when I multiply these two numbers together, I get 2.001 grams of helium sticking to my four significant figures. Another problem we can do is how many atoms are in four grams of copper? So this will be a two-step problem. You cannot go directly from grams to atoms. You have to go through the molar mass. We have to figure out first the number of moles. So I have four grams of copper. And if I go to my periodic table, I find copper right here. I see that one mole of copper is 63.546 grams. So I will write that down. Uh, this time, however, my grams go on the bottom so I can cancel out. So 63.546 grams of copper on the bottom. My one mole of copper goes on the top. But I'm not there yet. I'm in moles, but I want to know atoms. And so I know that one mole of copper is equal to Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. I put moles on the bottom so it cancels out. And now I'm in atoms, so I can go ahead and I can multiply across the top and divide by the number on the bottom. And when I do that, I get 3.79 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of copper in four grams of copper. So we can also do this for compounds. We can find the molar mass of compounds. And to do this, we find the mass of the molecule by adding the masses of the atoms they contain. So an example is water, H2O. And if we look at water, H2O, we see that now, instead of thinking of these numbers as atoms, as we did on our periodic table as well, we're now going to think of these numbers as moles. So there are two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen in water. So we go to our periodic table, and first we deal with the hydrogen. So we find the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.00794. So we write that down. We have two moles of it, so we do 2 times 1.00794 grams. Now we deal with the oxygen, and we only have one mole of that. And the molar mass of oxygen is 15.9994. So we add 15.9994. Now we do the math. We multiply this and we add this to it. And we get 18.02 grams per mole. Now I know I could have more significant uh, figures here, but I did round it off to the hundredths just because these numbers get really big. So now we can do a problem like how many moles are in one kilogram of water? Now, kilogram, hmm, all of my calculations have been in grams, so I need to get to moles. I know 
the molar mass of water in grams, but not in kilograms. So we have to convert from kilograms to grams for the first step. So I do that by knowing that there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. Kilogram goes on the bottom, so I can cross it out. 1,000 grams goes on the top. Now I'm in grams, and I can use that number that I just calculated because I now know that one mole of water is 18.02 grams of water. So the grams goes on the bottom, the moles goes on the top because that's the number I'm trying to get to. Now I can do my math. I can multiply across the top and divide by what's on the bottom and I get 55.5 moles of water. So our objectives for today were to define mole, describe the significance of Avogadro's number, and convert between the mass, number of particles, or number of moles present in a sample of a given chemical substance. So don't forget your five questions in your notes, and there will be more videos coming.